What's happening, y'all? Welcome inside the Fantasy Stock Exchange. Bush coming at you solo today to break down my Week 17 running back rankings tier list. This is where I go through my top 36 running backs on the week. It is championship week. Congrats to those of you guys that made it here. Hopefully, we can bring home the gold for you. So we're going through my top 36 rankings, breaking down usage, breaking down tiers, breaking down spreads, betting trends, all the good stuff that you need to set your running back lineups this week. If you guys enjoy at any point, you know what to do. Leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. But without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so on the screen, you guys can see the running back matchup chart. You can see some of the more difficult matchups. I'm sure a very deci uh, divisive name will be Josh Jacobs, uh, Ezekiel Elliott, who played on Thursday night, Austin Eckler, Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson, Najee Harris, uh, Kenneth Walker, et cetera. And then some of the easiest matchups this week go to Brian Robinson, Travis Etienne, Dalvin Cook, Tyler Algier and Cordero Patterson, DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams. Bam Knight and Michael Carter, so on and so forth. So we're going to start with uh, some notable injuries. There's a couple guys that are out, a couple guys that are limited that we need to pay attention to. Of course, on Thursday night, you guys would have been without Tony Pollard and Derrick Henry if you had either of those guys. Unfortunately, neither of those guys ended up playing for you. So that is definitely a big loss. I would imagine a lot of you guys are going to be going to the waiver wire or going to your benches and starting some of these RB2-3 types as a result of being without those players. Antonio Gibson also officially ruled out, hence the upgrade for Brian Robinson, and also you can't use him this week. And then Aaron Jones, who's been a limited participant in uh, practice the last couple of weeks, clearly fighting through a couple of things. He hasn't exceeded 50% uh, of the snaps more than once in the last three games. So definitely a guy to keep an eye on, definitely an upgrade for AJ Dillon if he's going to be limited yet again. But we can start it off with the elite RB1 tier, the guys that are in your lineup each and every week, no matter what. We're going to start it off with Christian McCaffrey, who is my RB1 for the week. The San Francisco 49ers are nine and a half point favorites against the Las Vegas Raiders. All this stuff will be on the screen. I won't say it for every single player. 42 point over under right now. Sharps are slightly leaning towards the over. 29th in adjusted fantasy points allowed to the running back position are the Las Vegas Raiders, mainly because they're allowing the most receiving yards and the re most receiving targets to the running back position. So given that kind of profile as a run defense, I don't think Christian McCaffrey is exactly the type of running back that you want to play, especially knowing that they're starting Jarrett Stidham on offense. It looks like they're kind of giving up on their season right now. Should be a blowout, should be a lot of opportunity for Christian McCaffrey. He is my RB1 on the week. RB2 for me is Austin Eckler. Eckler faces a top three most difficult matchup against the Los Angeles Rams in my matchup chart, but the Chargers are fighting for seeding in the playoffs. They're fighting for their playoff lives. They've already kind of clinched a playoff spot, but they could get up to the five seed if they continue to play well, get ahead of Baltimore. Uh, and the Rams aren't exactly the most resilient team if they get down early because they're you know playing with Baker Mayfield and, and a, bunch of, a bunch of castaways right now. Austin Eckler should be in for a big day once again. And again, we're without Aaron Donald still on that defense, which definitely helps Eckler out. So running back three on the week for me is Saquon Barkley. Colts are allowing the 27th most fantasy points to the running back position. They've given up on the season as well. And the Giants are still playing for seeding, similar to the Chargers situation. I'd expect the Giants to win this one handedly, uh, knowing that we have Nick Foles again starting for the Indianapolis Colts. So that was an easy tier of running backs. Those guys are in your lineup no matter what. Next, we get into the RB1s tier. And these guys are all probably in your lineup as well. Joe Mixon for me. My RB4 on the week, there is nearly a 50-point over-under in this Bills-Bengals game on Monday night. If they beat Buffalo, uh, Cincinnati, they have a chance to win the number one seed if Kansas City slips up either against the Broncos, which probably won't happen, or the next week against the Raiders. The Bills are my 11th most difficult matchup on my chart, so it's not a great spot for Joe Mixon. They're not necessarily a defense that's going to give it up to running backs, but potentially a high-scoring game environment are always a good environment for a guy like Joe Mixon whose value comes primarily from finding the end zone and being efficient when the passing game is efficient around him. So the running back five for me on the week is Dalvin Cook. Third easiest matchup are the Green Bay Packers. Justin Jefferson decimated the Packers back in week one. He was, you know, unbelievable, 185 yards and like two touchdowns the first time that they played. So I would say there's a good chance that they're going to try and focus on Justin Jefferson, the Green Bay defense. And that could mean more for Dalvin Cook because Dalvin Cook did not have a good game the first time that these two teams faced off. I could see Dalvin Cook getting into the end zone a couple times in this game, being more efficient on the ground, maybe breaking off a long run or something. So the running back six for me on the week is Travis Etienne. Etienne had a murderer's row of the Tennessee Titans. 
the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Jets the last three games, and therefore he hasn't been very good the last three games. But the Jaguars as a team are hot right now, and they're on a war path. I think this one could be a barn burner, and Travis Etienne has a chance to you know route the 32nd ranked uh, run defense in adjusted fantasy points allowed to the running back position. The Texans can't stop the run. We've known this all year. Um, I, I definitely think that ETN could have a monster game this week. RB7 for me is James Conner. We have David Blau starting for the Arizona Cardinals, which is not an ideal situation, but he is probably an upgrade over Tracy McSorley for what it's worth. And it's not ideal uh, regardless that James Conner still doesn't have Kyler Murray, of course, but the Falcons are a bottom 10 matchup for fantasy running backs and Conner receives like 95% of his team's work. So we're talking about a guy that's a full-fledged bell cow. Even if the offense isn't great, James Conner has a good chance to get into the end zone, to catch some passes, to get a lot of carries in this game. So I definitely think he's a great play regardless. Running back eight for me is Ramondre Stevenson. If you somehow advanced into your fantasy championship, despite the stinker that Ramondre Stevenson put up last week, he had 91% of the snaps, but he had a terrible game. So the Dolphins are a league average matchup for fantasy running backs, and he should be better off this week. So Ramondre Stevenson, definitely back in your lineup, just had a down game last week. RB9 for me is Josh Jacobs. Now, a lot of you guys, I'm sure, are going to wonder, where do I rank Josh Jacobs? Where do I have him? Is he a guy that you should even start? Given that we have Jarrett Stidham starting, he's playing against the San Francisco 49ers, who are obviously an awesome defense. I understand wanting to sit Josh Jacobs, but Jacobs is involved heavily in the receiving game. We have a guy that's probably going to check down a lot with a lot of pass rush coming at him with Nick Bosa and all those guys. Over 50% of the routes on the season this year is Josh Jacobs. 18% targets per route run. If Stidham's getting pressure, he's going to throw the ball to Josh Jacobs. He's going to get a lot of carries. We know what his workload is. You have to start him if you made it this far, unless you have just much, much better options like the guys I've already listed. If you wanted to put him a little bit lower than this, I'd understand it, but I still think Josh Jacobs has to be in your lineup. RB10 for me is Nick Chubb. Chubb failed to crack more than like 11 PPR points since Deshaun Watson took over the starting job at quarterback, but you pretty much have to keep rolling Nick Chubb out there. He's simply too good to sit in the fantasy finals, despite an even uh, a brutal matchup against the Washington Commanders. They're a very good run defense, but you have to play Nick Chubb. Maybe we'll eventually get Watson playing like Watson, but for now, you just have to throw Nick Chubb in there and hope that Watson gives you at least a, a moderately good performance at quarterback. RB11 for me is Kenneth Walker. Walker was a big time disappointment for people last week, but 28 touches, 100 rushing yards is going to result in good fantasy performance more often than not. Spread is very close here. The Jets are uh, one and a half point favorites against the Seahawks this week. They're likely going to need to rely on the run, but the way Geno Smith has been playing, sixth most difficult matchup for running backs. You worry about Kenneth Walker a little bit. I, I think he's got to be in your lineup though, regardless. The unfortunate thing is that this week, a lot of these like stud running backs that have a lot of big workloads are not getting the greatest matchups towards the end of this chart here with Jacobs, with Chubb, with Kenneth Walker. So we can move on to the next tier of running backs, which is the RB2s tier. First guy that leads off this tier is a guy that I have very, very high this week, which is Brian Robinson from the Washington Commanders. He is my RB12 on the week. Like I said, Antonio Gibson's been ruled out. He is going to be the only uh, running back in this backfield with J.D. McKissick on IR. They're playing in a must-win game, right? The Commanders are currently in sole possession of the seven seed in the NFC playoff picture right now. They need to win to continue uh, staying in that playoff picture because the Lions are hot on their tails. The Packers are hot on their tails. And if they keep winning, if they just win out, then they control their own destiny because of the tie that they have. So against the single, uh, the single easiest matchup for running backs in the NFL, the Cleveland Browns, give me Brian Robinson, especially you know knowing that Deshaun Watson's probably going to struggle on the other side of the ball. Should have a lot of uh, time of possession for a team that's going to run the ball like crazy against an easy run defense. So running back 13 for me is Ezekiel Elliott. Unfortunately, he did not have a good game on Thursday night football, put up 9.7 PPR points, saved the day with a touchdown, but you expected probably a lot more out of Ezekiel Elliott, given that Tony Pollard was out for the game. But the Tennessee Titans are a very good run defense, and that makes sense why Ezekiel Elliott wasn't very efficient. We just hope that he would have gotten some receiving work, and that definitely didn't happen. So running back 14 for me is David Montgomery. I think Montgomery and Herbert could do pretty much exactly what Deontay Foreman and Chuba Hubbard did to the Detroit Lions defense last week. This game has a lot of scoring potential, so I love David Montgomery in your lineup as a top 15 guy. If anybody's curious, too, if you're wondering, oh, did Khalil Herbert eat into his workload a lot last week when he came back? Not really. It was still the same 65, 70% snap share guy that David Montgomery usually is. We expect the Bears probably to run Justin Fields, run David Montgomery, run Khalil Herbert, and try and win this game on the ground against the Lions this week. So uh, running back 15 for me is Miles Sanders. The Saints are a sneaky bad run defense, and Sanders can really take advantage here of a bad run defense. I laid some money down on the over in this game because I think 42 points is just way, way too low 
for the Philadelphia Eagles in general, but especially with the Saints, they can put up some points as well. 98% of the money is on the over, uh, the, so the Sharps agree with me. I think Sanders is a much better matchup this week uh, as opposed to last week when he was playing against the Dallas Cowboys. So I love Miles Sanders as a top 15 guy. Running back 16 for me is eight, uh, Cam Akers. Cam Akers has two straight games of 75 plus uh, percent of the snaps. The RB1 overall on the week last week, getting all the carries, getting all the routes as well. Just mixed in Kyron Williams on third downs. That was pretty much the only time he was taken off the field. The Chargers are a run funnel defense. We know this about them. They've been one of the bottom five, bottom 10 run defenses in the league all season. But the only problem is the Rams will probably have a bit more of a, a more challenging time moving the ball through the air because the Chargers are a good pass defense. So that's something to worry about with Cam Akers. But overall, he's in your lineup. RB17 for me is A.J. Dillon. Aaron Jones has only exceeded 50% of the team snaps once in the last three games, as I mentioned in the beginning part. He's clearly on a pitch count, practicing in a limited capacity. Packers beat writers are writing articles uh, like he'd, be, he'd rather be out there and be limited than not be out there at all. He's a warrior. He's playing through stuff. Aaron Jones is not healthy, and I think that's going to mean more, you know, 55, 60, 65 percent snap share AJ Dillon games, which is why if I had the choice between the two running backs, I would rather play AJ Dillon. And uh, the Vikings are awful against the pass, so we know that the Packers are going to be able to move the ball, hopefully get some red zone opportunities for AJ Dillon to punch one in to the end zone. So I love AJ Dillon this week as a great play. RB18 for me is Jarek McKinnon of the Kansas City Chiefs. McKinnon strung together two games of over 55% of the snaps two and three games ago, but then last week he fell back down to 47% of the snaps, splitting more work with Isaiah Pacheco. The Broncos theoretically are a good defense, but Akers just ran for like, you know, three touchdowns and 100 yards against them. Their defense is dead. Like they are a dead team. We know that their offense can't move the ball. You're going to have a lot of scoring opportunity for the Kansas City Chiefs offense. McKinnon is out there running a route like 60% of the time and getting targeted nearly 20% of the time. Easy play this week as a part of that Chiefs offense. And then finally, closing out this year, we have Alvin Kamara, who is my RB19. Pretty much all year, we've seen Alvin Kamara get great usage and pretty much all year, it hasn't really mattered. But we did see Kamara spike back up to 72% of the team's routes, which is really important because him running up the middle is not how you can use Alvin Kamara effectively. And I'm sure if Sean Payton were there, he wouldn't be doing that. But that's what Pete Carmichael is doing for some reason. If he's back out there running a lot of routes, getting some targets like we saw last week, then he's going to definitely finish higher than I have him. But I honestly am not ready to just trust Alvin Kamara after one week of better usage going up against the Philadelphia Eagles defense where they could struggle to move the ball in general. So before we get into the next tier, as always, we got to hear from a word from our sponsors over at Manscaped. What's happening, y'all? This holiday season, our friends at Manscaped are helping you clear your driveway for safe travels this holiday season. From stocking stuffers to white elephants, Manscaped's products are at the top of every wish list. Win this year's white elephant gift and help all of the men in your life go from eggnog to nice hog this December by going to manscaped.com and using the promo code Bush at checkout. You will get 20% off plus free shipping. Me and Danny are huge advocates of Manscaped's products, and I'm sure the men in your life will love to get them as Christmas gifts as well. Manscaped is a one-stop shop for all of your holiday needs. They have the perfect gift in the Platinum Package 4.0 plus loads of little presents for stocking stuffers within that package. What a better holiday gift than the gift of good hygiene and probably a couple laughs as well. Manscaped has everything from shampoos, body washes, upstairs and downstairs, deodorant, gels, exfoliates, absolutely everything that the men in your life could need to keep them clean this holiday season. Get them a pair of Manscaped boxers as well, specifically made to keep the area of your body cool and provide a holiday comfort year round. And if your dad or your brother or your significant other has nasty nose hairs, save his life with the Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer. The Shears 2.0 is full for nail care with scissors, clippers, tweezers, and a file for the traveling man. There's the new Persevere Cologne, which is a light woodsy feel to it. Gives that fresh tree scent even after the holidays are over. If the men in your life are still using a loofah, check out the Body Buffer. Loofahs actually hold bacteria from dead skin, help them throw out that disgusting loofah, and get them the body scrubber that helps them feel smoother. And lastly, topping off the stocking with the crown jewel for their family jewels, the Lawnmower 4.0 Electric Razor Advanced Skin Safe Technology designed specifically for your downstairs area, known for reducing risks and cuts on his Santa sack. Manscaped is here to make holiday shopping a blast by giving products that they'll love and also giving them a laugh in the process. Again, 20% off plus free shipping using the promo code Bush at manscaped.com. Whatever the men in your life need for Christmas, Manscaped will have you covered for the perfect gift that will be the biggest holiday hit. Go to manscaped.com 
promo code Bush for 20% off plus free shipping. And we're back to the video. Big shout out to Manscaped. Christmas is over, but I'm sure maybe you guys got some cash for Christmas. You want to buy yourself a, you know, new year, new me type of gift. Promo code Bush for 20% off plus free shipping as always. Now let's get into the final tier of running backs that we're going to go in depth with. And then I'll show the RB3s at the end of the video. RB20 for me is DeAndre Swift. Swift's usage is pretty much never consistent. It goes 51% of the snaps a couple weeks ago, then 40%, then 35%, then 56% last week. It's kind of a roller coaster with DeAndre Swift, but he still gets targets. He still gets two minute work, et cetera. This game is a 52 point over under. We know the Lions play a lot better at home than they do on the road. So give me uh, pieces, especially knowing that DeAndre Swift is going to get those valuable touches in PPR leagues. So DeAndre Swift definitely in my lineup this week. RB21 for me is Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette has logged two games with 55 plus percent of the snaps. It seems that he's kind of like regained his starting role and he's running about half the routes as well and being targeted 20% of the time on the season. So knowing that the Buccaneers have to win this game, it's a must win game. If they lose, then the Panthers are probably going to take their playoff spot. Brady doesn't trust his offensive line and Leonard Fournette and Rashad White, the two running backs have been a big beneficiary of that this year. There's been a lot of running back targets. I'd venture a guess. I don't actually know off the top of my head, but I would say that the Bucs are top five or top three in the NFL at targeting the running back position this year. The Panthers are 20th in my matchup chart, so it's not a difficult spot here. The Bucs win and they're in the playoffs. It's very simple. So they're going to be trying to win this game as, as easily as they can. Leonard Fournette has a chance to get into the end zone in this one. RB22 for me is Tyler Algier. He had a massive week last week, but he's still getting a relatively a similar workload when you look at the underlying usage. About 60% of the snaps, getting about 50% of the running back carries. The only difference now is that with Desmond Ritter as the quarterback, 50% of the running back carries translates to like 17, 18, 19, 20 carries versus before it was, you know, with Marcus Mariota, 50% of the carries meant, you know, you're getting 10 carries, which is what Tyler Algier was getting before. And he's getting targets as well. He's been very efficient. He's PFF's number seven graded running back on the season. He's playing at a very high level. So he's in my lineup as a guy that, you know, probably isn't getting the greatest workload in the world, but is playing at a high level and will get into the end zone if he has opportunities. RB23 for me is Zonovan Knight. This one's a bit of a leap of faith because Bam Knight has been limited to just 40 to 50% of the snaps the last three games. But as we know with the New York Jets, they go as Mike White goes. When Zach Wilson's in there, everything goes wrong. Garrett Wilson's worse. Elijah Moore is worse. You know, Tyler Conklin's worse. The running game is worse. And with Mike White in there, everything else is better. When Mike White is there with the Jets, all is right in the world. They can suddenly run the ball. They can suddenly move the ball on offense in the passing game. And this matchup is great for Zonovan Knight against the 27th ranked run defense, the Seattle Seahawks in my matchup chart here. I think Bam Knight is in for a big time bounce back this week. And I think if you have a guy like, let's say Aaron Jones, who we don't know if he's going to be playing a full workload and you have Bam Knight on your bench, I honest to God would rather start Bam Knight this week than Aaron Jones. So RB24 for me is Najee Harris. He's getting great usage once again. He's up near 70, 75% of the snaps right now. But this game is a 35 point over under. It's an absolute drizzler. Raven Steelers, not a great game overall. I'm not getting ready to fire up really anybody from this game. And if Najee doesn't find the end zone, he'll probably end up being very disappointing. He's still a fine volume play because he gets work and he gets receiving work, but not a guy that you're expecting a ton out of. So uh, RB24 there. Najee Harris, RB25, speak of the devil, is Aaron Jones. He's a really risky play, right? If he, if I knew he was healthy and getting his full workload, he'd be up in the top 10 of my running back rankings. But if you got him, you might have better options to play in your starting lineup because I think he's going to be limited. I think he's going to be on a pitch count yet again. I do not think he's a must-start uh, must player at all, as I detailed with A.J. Dillon. And I would bench him for everybody I mentioned so far in this video, despite the solid matchup. And again, if you have both Green Bay Packers running backs, I would play A.J. Dillon over Aaron Jones this week. RB26 for me is Devin Singletary, 60% and 58% of the snaps the last two weeks. Big over under in this game. Just give me pieces, right? This Bengals Bills game, going to have points in it. I just want pieces of this game. Singletary has been able to find the end zone the past couple of weeks, and it's a tough matchup against a top eight Bills uh, or Bengals defense against the run, but I'm trusting the scoring of this Bills offense. We do that around here when we have high over unders. And then finally, closing out this tier, we have J.K. Dobbins, who is my RB's 27. He's been efficient. He knows how to find the end zone, but we still don't have Lamar Jackson coming back. It's a 35-point over-under game. I just don't love this game environment, like I said, for Najee Harris. And J.K. Dobbins, when he came back, he had 43% of the snaps, which was encouraging his first game back from the, from the injury that he was coming off of. But that was three weeks ago, and he hasn't increased his snap share since. So it looks like they're going to kind of keep him in that 40% range, which is definitely not going to make him a must-start type of player. If he was getting, you know, 60, 70% of the snaps like he probably should be, then he would be a must-start type of dude, but he's not getting that kind of workload. So definitely 
not encouraging for J.K. Dobbins. I don't think you need to start him. And actually, some of the guys I have ranked ahead of or behind him here, Deontay Foreman and Zach Moss and, and some of these guys in this RB3 tier, they have better workloads. And if you wanted to favor those guys, I definitely wouldn't blame you. So here is the RB3s. I'm not going to go over these guys in depth, but you guys can see the spreads and all that uh, relevant information there. Like I said, RB28, Deontay Foreman, RB29, Zach Moss, RB30, uh, Jeff Wilson, RB31, Rashad White. RB32, Isaiah Pacheco, RB33, James Cook, RB34, Hassan Haskins, who already played on Thursday night and had 7.3 PPR points, RB35, Raheem Mostert, and then RB36, Latavius Murray. And that closes out my RB or my top 36 RB rankings for Fantasy Championship Week. Again, thank you guys for sticking around with us all season if you have. Also, shout out to you if you made your Fantasy Championship. I hope you bring home the gold and win this thing for your fantasy teams. Just because the off season is coming doesn't mean that we are going to slow down anytime soon. As soon as the off season calendar flips, we get into reflective content. What went right? What went wrong this year? We get into dynasty rankings updates. We get into, you know, rookie stuff. We get into all that fun stuff that personally I find way more fun than doing in season content because, you know, in season content's a little repetitive, especially after doing the same stuff for 17 weeks straight. So definitely if you guys, uh, you know, stuck around with us all season, leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel. If you are new around here, stay tuned for more fantasy content and all that good stuff. But with that being said, peace out. And we'll talk to you soon. Wire me the money.